Well, hello and welcome to worship here on the last Sunday of Epiphany as we begin our journey into Lent. A couple of announcements. Number one for the Lenten book study will begin Thursday evenings starting February 25th. I should say Thursday, there'll be a, a class offered Thursday afternoon and one in the evening starting February 25th. The announcement is there in the e-table. Be sure and purchase the book and read ahead by Joan Chittister and Rowan Williams. It ought to be a good and uh, exciting time together. Also, if you do not have a UTO box for the Lenten season, you may be like me, yours is still sitting at home on your uh, home altar, but if you don't have one, stop by the parish here, we'll provide you one, and if you have one at home, keep filling that thing up, because sometime we're gonna bring them back and we're gonna have a grand offering for the UTO. So bring those back. People have asked about what we're gonna do for uh, Ash Wednesday, and that will also be written up in the e-table. And so uh, make sure you pay attention to the article that I write. And uh, I want to remind you, you're all your own priests in the very end. And so taking care of things at home right now might be the best way we can care for one another. After that, I have nothing left to say as far as announcements, so let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our canticle of praise is the Nunc Dimittis, number 17, on page 93. Page 93, and let us start. Pray it by the half verse. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal, and Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you not know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other. until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and cried out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel 
and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Let the church hear what the Spirit is speaking to them. Please stand for the psalm. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 50. We will read verses 1 through 6 responsively by the whole verse. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. 
This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, we've come to the end of Epiphany. It's kind of hard to keep track of liturgical time being separated from one another, not having come to church on a regular basis for worship. But the guiding star is set over the horizon. The wise men have gone home by a different road. And we are at the doorstep of Lent, the lengthening of days. This year, there's not going to be a pancake supper. What are Anglicans going to do? We won't be burning the palms out on the back porch. But we're still going to enter the 40 days coming up this Wednesday. And I believe if God is going to make any kind of change in Dave Wettstein or in any of us, I think it's always going to be at Lent because our ears are picked up a little bit more, our senses are a little bit more heightened, because we're, we're just looking, waiting. That's what the season of Lent is for, is to, to prepare us. In this upcoming season, our lives will have something added to them and something maybe taken away. Silence will give way to listening. And hopefully Lent will bring a double portion of blessing to each and every one of us, that we grow both in faith and love. Now in the passage that was read from Kings, the old prophet Elijah is about to be assumed into heaven with chariots of fire. It's a a strange piece to the end of the story of Elijah. But that piece is very important for us in the New Testament because that's what people debate when they think of John the Baptist, that he was Elijah, he never died, and now he's come back. And Elijah has a successor, a student, his name is Elisha. And he asks for one thing. Master, give me a double portion of the prophet's spirit before you go. Well, this passage struck me right between the eyes because at this point in my ministry and as I look towards the future, it speaks a lot to me about what am I leaving behind and what's gonna happen. I am no prophet, nor am I a prophet's son as the scriptures record. But I, like Elijah, am handing off my mantle, my sign of the, the prophet's office, of the pastor's office. There's nothing dramatic about my going. If there are chariots of fire, I'm not looking forward to it. But it's time. And I pray that the one who takes my place has a double portion of the gifts to lead, to teach, to reconcile as your rector, priest, and pastor. We are at the door of Lent on this Sunday, February 14th, which I assume some of you have got your candies and chocolates and all the gifts that Valentine is supposed to bring. But on this day, we're invited, there's a holy invitation given given to all of us to go up the mountain with the Lord, with Peter, James, and John. This is a time of holy revelation. 
Now, the one thing about revelation is you can't force it. Whenever somebody tells you they've had a revelation, believe them. But if it sounds like it's too convenient and they've kind of forced it, give them some room. We can wish for revelation, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's not our will be done through fastings and almsgiving and prayer. All we can do when we take the invitation of the Lord to follow is to open up ourselves and to listen. Just as the voice came to Peter, James, and John, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. This becomes, I think, our work in, in Lent is to listen. We can't force his voice. We can't pretend that he's saying to us what we want to hear. But Lent is a time for listening. That's why I always recommend during Lent, if you have a practice of reading scripture every day, keep at it. If you don't, there's about a billion resources on the interweb with all its tubes and wires to, to tell you how to read scripture daily. If that doesn't serve you, call me. It'd be a good reason to have a conversation. Come by the church, I'll keep you at six feet away, put your mask on. I'll show you how to do it every day. I might even give you a resource or two. But Lent is a time to pick up the scriptures. It's one way of listening to God. And parallel to that is to read books, good books, books that challenge you, books you wouldn't normally read about the spiritual life, and the things that matter in this world. To listen to God means that you engage with that activity of listen, which means, ironically, you have to be silent. And whether you're there for two minutes or for 20, to listen for what God may have to say. And you're not going to get a first word or anything your first time. Well, maybe you will. I don't know. But listening is a long time, lifelong practice. When Peter is up there on the mountain and he sees Moses and Elijah and Jesus, he can't help himself. He can't stop. He's got to say, let me build you some booths. Why don't you guys stay right here? And he doesn't understand that maybe just being present being astonished and keeping silent so he can hear. And the third way to listen to the Lord's Son, Jesus Christ, pay attention to nature. The first book, the first word. This is the season of lengthening days. It's not always going to be warm, but this is a time to be out, to remind ourselves that God speaks through this world around us. Going up the mountain, I think that's a revelation we'd all like to have. You know, for a lot of people, that would cement what faith is about. I could see Moses and Elijah and Jesus. And I think either emotionally or intellectually, we'd feel satisfied for a minute. Revelation is more than getting your needs met. Revelation is about hearing and then doing the will of God. It's listening and putting your hands to compassion and justice. We have a world that needs our stewardship. The environment needs our care. 
and as we work as a country to re-engage with the world around those issues, we have to remind ourselves that we have daily responsibilities. The word has been spoken to us that we've only got so much time. To listen to God is to listen to our brothers and sisters of color. And especially as we now understand more and more each day the kind of racial reconciliation this nation needs. We know that racism is alive and well in America. No one need tell you that anymore. What we need is to work towards an end where all people are treated just, where black lives matter. Is that revelation? For most of it's old news, but when we make it happen, perhaps that will be the revelation. Well, the days are lengthening. You know, winter is not through with us yet. We still have its lessons to learn. But let us come with a sense of wonder to listen, to receive. That the beloved son has spoken and he will speak to us again and again. That this world is a good place. Take care of it. It needs our love. Amen. Please stand. And on page 358, let's say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all I that is seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God light from light, light true, true God, God from true, true God, God, begotten not made, made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us, God's people, pray. Our bidding today will be Christ most gracious. And the response will be, shine your light in and through us. 
shine your light in and through us. Yahweh, God of fire and wind, guide us away from earthly noise and distraction to consciously seek the lifting up of the gospel veil that we now listen and live according to your word and your wisdom on the dry and sacred ground of our own being on this earth. Christ, most glorious, shine your light in and through us. Yahweh, God of fire and wind, we have much on our hearts with the impeachment trial, COVID-19 spreading throughout the communities, businesses struggling, too many people with inadequate food, too many people homeless or afraid of being homeless. We pause in this moment to offer you our heartfelt thanksgivings, our own intercessions and petitions. Christ, most glorious, shine, shine your light, light in, in and through us. us. Yahweh, God of fire and wind, enliven and excite the spirits of all who lead us in your church, that they may be a beacon of light to guide us across life's troubled waters, inspire us to live courageous lives seeking justice for all people, mercy for all who are downtrodden, and loving to all we meet. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Brian, our bishop, for David, our rector, and for all clergy and lay leaders. Christ, most glorious, shine, shine your, light your light in, in and, and through, through us. us. Yahweh, God of fire and wind, enfold the leaders in our communities and country with your spirit. Open all blinded minds by a heaven-sent whirlwind of spiritual fire to illuminate and beckon all of us to the path of your truth, your justice, and your mercy. We pray especially for Joe, our, pres our, bis our president, for all the members of Congress, for the Senate, and for all those who are testifying at the impeachment hearings. Christ, most glorious, shine, shine your, your light, light in, in and, and through, through us. us. Yahweh, God of fire and wind, grant comfort and healing to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and enlighten the hearts of all who give care and support. We now join our hearts together to pray for those in need. Remembering Lee, Lanny, Natalie, Haley, Tina, Jake, Michael, Billy, Dr. Leah, Mike, Jenny, Jan, Dan, Ted, Zach, Scott, and Susie. Christ, our most glorious, shine, shine your, your light, light in, in and, and through, through us. us. Yahweh, God of fire and wind, ease the darkness of grief, of grief across the earth for those who have lost their loved ones. Keep them mindful that the division of heaven and earth is thin, 
a chariot's ride away. We pray now for all who have entered into the radiance of new life in you. For Amy Evans, Kit Bainbridge, and AJ, and for those we now name. Christ, most glorious, shine your light in and through us. And hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you, you in thought, word, word and deed, deed by, by what, what we, we have, have done, done and by, by what, what we have, have left undone. undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. We are sick of our Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to you all. Let us stand and pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen. On page 364, let us say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will, will be, done. be done, on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us, us today, today our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us, us our, our sins. sins. As, as we, we forgive, forgive those, those who sin, sin against, against us. us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And for birthdays today, we remember Eleanor and Maria Strait, who were born on February 8th. They're 22. Wonderful age. Maria is in her last year at Whitworth College in Spokane, and uh, Eleanor is in her last year of college at, uh, help me. Um. Wheaton College in Champaign-Urbana. We'll look forward to hearing the good news of their graduation. So, let us go from here in peace. Remember the poor. Be kind and gracious to one another. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God and Mother of us all, be upon you and remain with you from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.